pupils welcome to an english language lesson this lesson is for form 4 and form 5. today we are going to look at spm speaking guide now let's look at the paper speaking is paper 3 and the code is triple one nine stroke 3 timing 13 minutes marks 24 number of parts there are three test parts types of tasks there are first interview, uh, there are general questions, and then you have individual long term based on text or prompt or verbal prompt. And then you have a discussion where there are two candidates. It is based on mind map stimulus, and there is also further discussion. Waiting, it is 25% of overall candidate grade. Let's look at the format of the paper. First, we have part one, which is general question. Part two is individual long term uh, based on text. Um, uh, part three will be discussion based on mind map. Dear students, let's start with part one. Now, let's get part one. Part one is general questions. So, they are phase one and also phase two. For phase one, questions are such as, what's your name? Where do you live? Where do you come from? How do you come to school? Let's look at the answers for these questions. The first one, what's your name? So you can answer, my name is Balkis. And then for candidate B, and what's your name? So you can answer, I am Amira. Where do you live or where do you come from? So the answer can be, I live at or in Seremban. Uh, or Taman Lavender Heights. The next question, how do you come to school? You can answer, I come to school by bus, I come to school by car, or I come to school by train. And for part two or phase two, the questions are, what do you normally do after you wake up? What do you usually do after coming back from school? How do you spend your leisure time? What do you do on weekends? Now for more questions. The first one, what do you normally do after you wake up or what is the first thing you do every day? So the answer can be, after I wake up, I do my daily routine of preparing myself for school, like breathing, praying and having breakfast. For question two, what do you usually do after coming back from school? Or the interlocutor can ask you, what do you do when you get home from school every day? So the answer, uh, you can say, when I get home from school, I take a nap or go to my tuition class. Uh, next question, do you spend, how do you spend your leisure time? Or what do you do when you have free time? So you can answer, during my free time or during my leisure time, I often go jogging, or you can say, I always go shopping with my family members. And the last question. So these are the possible questions. What do you do on weekends? So the answer, on weekends, I go to my grand grandparents' house. Or you can say, on weekends, I still have to attend a few tuition classes. So you can answer. Uh, the question could be, what do you do on Friday, Saturday or Sunday? So you can say, on uh, Saturday, I still have to attend a few tuition classes. Or you can say, on Sunday, I play tennis with my friends. Let's look at part two. This is for part two. Part two is individual long term based on text. So there are two candidates. Candidate A will get one question and candidate B another question. So in this part of the test, candidate is given a topic each and they talk about it on their own for about a minute. Remember that each candidate is given 20 seconds to prepare. They also need to answer a question briefly about their partner's topic. Let's look at the question for candidate A. Remember that this is for individual long term based on tax, which is part two. So for candidate A, it is about a family celebration. Talk about a family celebration you had recently. You should say what the event was, 
what you did there, if you enjoyed yourself, why or why not, why the family celebrations are important in Malaysia. So after that, there is also a question for candidate B. What was the last celebration you had? Did you have a good time? Why? Dear students, now let's look at the model answers. A family celebration I recently had was Hari Raya Adil Fitri. I celebrated it at home as we could not visit relatives and friends due to the movement control during the COVID-19 pandemic. Although I was not able to visit my grandparents in Ipoh and my friends, I still enjoyed myself because my parents bought me new clothes and my mom cooked a lot of my favorite dishes. Family celebrations are important in Malaysia because they are a part of our tradition. Traditions help create memories, help impart our life values to children and also help create a sense of belonging. Celebrations also strengthen family bonds. Dear students, after candidate A has given his or her answer, then candidate B has to answer the question. Here the question is, what was the last celebration you had? Did you have a good time? Why? So you can answer, the last celebration I had was my mother's birthday. I had a good time with my parents and siblings. I enjoyed our dinner at the restaurant as there were delicious food and drinks and my mother loved the present that I gave her. Dear students, do remember that for part 2, there are two questions for candidate A and also candidate B. Now, let's look at candidate B. Now, this is the question for candidate B. A person you admire. Talk about a person you admire. You should say, who is this person? What this person looks like? Why you admire this person? If you think it is important for people to have a good role model, why and why not? And after candidate B has completed the task, there is a question for candidate A. Who do you admire? Why? Now let's look at the model answer. The person I admire is my mother. She is in her 40s now and is a teacher in a secondary school in Rawang. She is quite tall and has a sweet smile. She is also bespectacled. I admire my mother for her hard work and dedication to her family and also career. She is quite strict with all her three children but I know that her reminders and advice have helped me through most of my problems. I think it is important for people to have good role models because they can inspire us to achieve the zenith of success. They help us improve our life and attitude as well as become a guiding light when we have bigger goals to achieve. Next, after candidate B has finished his or her a part of the explanation, the question will be asked to candidate A. Who do you admire? Why? So you can answer, I admire my elder brother. He is a talented person and is now studying computer programming in the States. He is proficient in programming languages and he can identify problems and come up with the most efficient ways to solve coding related to programming. Dear students, the last part is part 3. Now let's look at part 3. Part 3 is a discussion between the two candidates, candidate A and B, and it is based on a mind map. So quite two candidates or partners talk about something together for about 3 minutes. The task will have two parts. In the first part, they will discuss something with each other for about 2 minutes. The candidates are given 20 seconds to prepare. Then, in the second part, they will have another minute to make a decision together on which is the best reason students use social media. So this is based on the question in the test. So example here, this is the question. So remember that this is a mind map. And then uh, in this situation, candidate A has to choose three ideas and candidate B chooses the other three ideas. So for example, candidate A can choose no crowds 
time saving and better prices. So this is for the question, why do people shop online? And for candidate B, he or she can choose, follow the trend, wide variety, and also convenient. So remember that candidate A has three ideas and candidate B has three ideas. Okay, students, on the next slide, we will look at the model answer and also there is an audio. Remember, for part three, there are two parts where the first part you have to discuss and the second part is you have to choose the best. It depends on the question that you will get in your exam. Candidate A. In my opinion, people shop online because there are no crowds. We do not need to go to shops which are often crowded with people especially during sales. Candidate B. You're right. It is also convenient as we can order or buy things from the comfort of our homes. We just need to use our mobile phone or tablet and click the app and order the goods. Candidate A. Another reason people like online shopping is it is time, saving. Ordering items at the click of a few buttons and we also save time queuing in the shops do make payment. Candidate B. There are also wide variety of products on online shopping. If you cannot find the product from an app, you can always search for it in another app. Candidate A. I agree. In fact, items online have better prices. The products are cheaper and there are daily discounts too. This is because the companies do not have to pay rental fees for their shops. Candidate B. When we shop online, we can also follow the trend. The fashion and style are always the latest. Candidate A slash B. I think the best reason people shop online is because it is time saving. I mentioned earlier that we can order products by just clicking a few buttons or keys on our mobile phone, tablet, or laptop and choose the app we want and we can type the product we wish to buy. The app will list the products in less than a minute. Candidate A slash B. I agree with you. We also don't waste time traveling to the shops and maybe, we need more time to find a parking space. Candidate A slash B. Teacher, both of us agree that time saving is the best reason why people shop online. The last part of the video today is expressions for speaking. You need to learn the expressions so that you can perform better in this examination. Asking for an opinion. What's your idea? What are your thoughts on all of this? How do you feel about that? Do you have anything to say about this? What do you think? Do you agree? Wouldn't you say? Do you think? How do you feel about? In your opinion. Please tell me your opinion on. What do you think about? What's your opinion on? Would you agree that? Can you give me your thoughts on? Do you, dis, approve of? Do you agree with the opinion that? Do you have any views on? Do you share the slash my view that? If I asked your opinion about? If I said? I'd like, to hear, your views on. I'm sure you'd agree that. What are your feelings about? What are your views on? Are you in agreement with? Do you have any particular views on? Do you have any thoughts on? From your point of view. Stating an opinion. I think. I feel. I guess. In my view. From my perspective. From my viewpoint. Personally, I think. What I mean is. Some people say that. It is generally accepted that. It goes without saying that. I'm of the opinion that. I believe. I suppose. According to me. In my opinion. It seems to me that. In my eyes. From my point of view. As far as I'm concerned. I'd like to point out that. Generally it is thought that. Well, it is considered that. My impression is that. I hold the view that. Expressing an agreement. I agree. Definitely. 
Absolutely. I see your point. I'd go along with that view to a point. I have to side with you on this one. I think so too. That's a good point. You're right, that's a good point. That's true. You have my full agreement. Okay, that's convincing. You took the words right out of my mouth. I totally agree. I couldn't agree more. Precisely. I see what you are getting at. Sure, that's one way of looking at it. I suppose so. I'd go along with that. I see exactly what you mean. Actually, I think you're right. Well, I agree with you here. I second that. I take your word on it. Expressing a disagreement. I see your point, but... That's one way of looking at it, however. Well, I see things rather differently. UMM, I'm not sure about that. I agree up to a point, but... I wouldn't quite put it that way myself. I can't slash couldn't go along with that. That's out of question. You've got to be kidding. I find that very difficult to accept. Not necessarily. That's not always true. There is no way I could agree with that. No, I'm not sure about that because... I see what you are getting at, but... I completely disagree. I'm not sure I go along with that view. I don't really agree with that idea. You could say that, however. I still have my doubts. Well, I don't quite agree with you. We don't seem to agree here. I don't think so. I'm afraid, I disagree. We don't seem to be in complete agreement. Expressing an interruption. Sorry to interrupt, but... Is it okay if I jump in for a moment? If I may interrupt. Do you mind if I add something? Excuse me, but in my opinion. Excuse me for a second, but... Let me finish what I have to say first. Excuse me for interrupting, but... Well, that reminds me that... I don't mean to intrude, but... Sorry, but can you let me finish? Before you go on, I'd like to say something. Before you move on, I'd like to say something. Can I add something here? If I might add something. Can I throw my two cents in? UMM, well not really. Are you telling that? Sorry, but I'm not done yet. May I say something here? Sorry to cut you off, but... So, you're telling me. Well, if that is the case. Wait a minute. Just a moment, I like to add something here. Hey pupils, thank you for watching this video. Do remember to subscribe to my channel. It is called Educator OmniTube. I am Madam Gan. Signing off and see you again in the next video for SPM. Bye-bye.